Big semi-final. Winner plays against Bjorn in the grand finals. In the top left, our blue Terran player. This is Clem. Takes on the red Protoss on the right side of the map from Dragon Kaiser Gaming. It is Hero. Game one of this best of five gets underway. Let's see what the hell is going to go down. <clears throat> Somebody does this map with all of those kind of half bases a bit further around the map as well. So we'll keep our eyes out for those. Should be fun. See if uh, we get to a late enough game. We did see the one matchup that went very late on this map was actually a um, TVP, right? So it's possible. It's possible for sure. We will find out very soon as we get <clears throat> into this best of five semifinal. We'll see exactly what happens in the Team Liquid Map Contest Tournament. It's been fun. This hero's going to put a pile on down in the top right, so maybe he's feeling like getting a little bit aggressive right away. Again, we said this earlier, Clem is feeling a bit sick today. We'll see how on top of things he may be able to remain. How on top of things he might be able to stick. As the side of the call comes through, the probe is on the way up as well. Just a few things we start to bring into play for the moment. As we do have ourselves the <clears throat> gate and the cyber core continue to produce the factory on the way, the command center building as well. And, uh, yeah, wait to see what the next step of this will all be. It's the twilight on the proxy. Oh my goodness, we're going to proxy dark shrine? Uh, uh, oh, kind of love it, actually. Something a bit of a, a wild one to start off with, and I assume it is a dark shrine. Is there any world this is potentially actually a, um... There is a world where this could potentially maybe be instead a just blink one base all in or something. But he said it's another pile up closer forward. I kind of want to say Dark Shrine. I really believe Dark Shrine. Oh, Glaives! Okay, I was not thinking Glaives at all. A one base Glaive opener. Well, that's definitely unique. That's definitely one way to play in a completely different than expected manner. Okay, Hero. All right, I'm along for the ride. I'm, 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 I'm in. I've got my seatbelt on. Take me, take me to wherever our destination may be, because I am intrigued. One base adept all in. Something very funky. Something very, like you say, different to the expectation here for sure. As you see, we'll see at some point some extra gaze will come online. That adept count is going to keep on rising up as well. Waves on the way through, a couple of adepts halfway along, the warp gate's about to finish. There's marines still coming out as well. As the adepts will shade up from the bottom side of the map, so away they go. Up to the top again on a little bit of a journey initially. Climber has built a cyclone initially, now he's going to be on his way to a siege tank, so a couple of uh, moments are setting up here in general for him. As we obviously will have to try and figure out what this is. The Adepts do come around and they're going to start showing themselves. Good amount of Marines so far. A wall off and just kind of general um, zoning of these Adepts is usually very important. The last thing you want is to let these Adepts jump straight on top of your Marines. I don't think Clem is ready for this in the slightest. The Adepts shade four jump straight on top. The Marines are going to be in trouble. And as tank sieges now, but with every single marine dead, the cyclone and the tank have so much work to do. The cyclone is going to be one of the next targets, perhaps. Although, oh no, we do commit and we do get the cyclone as well. So just going to nap that right away there. So that will fall. This will continue to go into hero's favor very early on. Of course, he is just one base, so he really does need to do a lot of damage. This tank will and siege a dark shrine follow up. Hero just absolutely sending it. He says, cool, big map, interesting bases to look at. Let's glaive all in. Again, obviously, we're at the point as well where because today's gone so long, we have had a lot of, you know, very cool games up until now, guys. It is very late in Korea, and so it is possible that some of these guys might play a bit more aggressively in some of these games with that in mind. So, uh, we're kind of, you know, we might get uh, punished for having such great games earlier on, is what I'm saying. As we just have the Adepts trying to break through again. Clem will just play one base to one base, though. That means the Adepts are going to be much less effective in doing anything. And uh, Hero actually did cancel his Dark Shrine, decides that that is not the way to continue forward at the moment. Starport relocating for Clem, who has the Ravens, so he's going to have that option open to him. So if this is a DT follow-up, it will not work. 
And Clem now holding the wall off, so let's see if he can actually keep this. I mean, he loses the depot already, so that's pretty quick to lose the depot, which is going to be a pretty big part of the problem for sure. Depths get in again, but this time Clem is able to do some good damage. Obviously, again, just the wall off is so effective against the Depths. It's kind of crazy just how good and how powerful that is. These Marines are going to go hunting down and... You know, it did not start well at all for Clem, but the follow-up defense has been absolutely on point here. And this actually might be good enough <clears throat> to actually give Clem a game one victory. Tank Siege is up as well. That's going to get things settled. Hey guys, Bjorn is back in Korea just for reference to see the discussion chat. He was only in Canada to prepare for Atlanta. Is back in Korea now as Marines and tanks continue to join up. Over here, we get set once again. Gonna see those adepts thinking about jumping on top of these Marines. Looking to get on top in the next couple of moments. We'll be seeing those uh, shots firing up, and the adepts again just not gonna do enough realistically. We can see that, right? This is not going well enough at all. This is looking as though we are, in fact, gonna have just too much from Clem. The supplies now are not even really fair. I mean, I love just the fact he was building the Raven. Obviously, good to see that uh, his opponent kind of figured it out as well. You know, his opponent also saw the fact that this was a Raven and that he cancelled the Dark Shrine because of it, but I think that was actually a very important thing because otherwise this could have gone very differently. To build the D... Well, I mean, not very differently as well. It could have gone differently if Clem had not built the Raven and the DT's hit. Obviously, uh, good from Hero to notice the Raven was potentially on the way as well. Clem is going to take game one of this best of five semi-final holds. The one base all in of a day. On the top right hand side, our blue products player down a game. There's one basing not working out. This is Hero. Taking on the red Terran in the bottom right hand corner of the map. This is going to be Clem. Well, this map is also kind of wild. We have seen players play this island base. Was it Clem Showtime? Clem took this base? That was very fun. It was, wasn't it? It was Clem Showtime and Clem took this base and uh, basically defended this with his life for the entire game. <laughs> Love to see something like that again here against Hero, see if you can make something crazy work. As uh, obviously players making use of these maps in wild ways is what we live for in the DLMC. This is a two player map, guys. There are pretty much no four-player maps. Unfortunately, guys, four-player maps really just aren't good. There's so many reasons why they're not good. It really is uh, just kind of <clears throat> at the point where we had a, a TLMC where a bunch of four-player maps got in. It was one of the categories. And even when there was a category designed around making a successful four-player map, they still continue to have a lot of the issues that existed with four-player maps all the time, so people have uh, kind of given up on it. I mean, it's not just the scouting. Obviously, scouting is part of it. I actually think a bigger part is it's extremely difficult to balance a four-player map for the different spawning opportunities. There's almost always going to be someone who feels like they're better off or worse off for the position they spawn in. And it's very hard to make that balanced out to the point where people are going to like playing on it, you know? Reaper Hope's going down. Reaper is successful. Clem does not take that center base just yet. Both players just going to expand in a fairly normal way. You're playing the Stargate, which makes sense as well on the, you know, map that is very much so close by air. Get some Phoenix out, defend any air harass. Be able to harass yourself, potentially. Lots of options there for sure. 
Stalker gets into this main. It's going to be a gunner once the Cyclone spawns. How much can it do before then? Two SCVs, so actually pretty good. Probably not worth trapping a Stalker in by the time you've lost two SCVs, so... An idea was neat. I think in the end, maybe not actually all that great. As you see an Oracle coming up right now as well. Just bringing that through still. Stalker here is just going to get recalled back away. Reaper in the middle of the map, coming back down the bottom right. We need one player maps, yes. One player maps are the solution, guys. One player maps are the hit are the future of StarCraft 2. Good call. Got Twitch chat, you're so smart. I bet all the map makers play one make one player maps next to LMC. Clem not having a good time. As you have four SCVs going down already, so damage is being done. Adding up right from the get-go. This really has been pretty good for a hero, doing a good job of, you know, being able to get in there, deal some damage, put himself in some good positions. Really making this a very successful start for himself throughout these first few moments. This few Widow Mines are now going to go across the other side of the map, so they're going to go on a bit of a journey as well. Seeing they blink on the way through the gate coming up, a couple more barracks in production as well. As the next is going down the third base, we'll just get that on the go. Also, something else that's nice to grab. Let's just get one more grenade down. A couple of the adepts still taking damage, then a bit more damage being done. These two adepts can be pretty slow. Moving through the center, but they will try their best. Still got Blink on the way, still got Nexus on the way. Just for the moment, a lot of build-up. Still happening. For this uh, portion of the game. Blink is about to be done. Obviously, again, the Oracle's been great. Definitely doing enough damage that Clam can't necessarily come across the map and punish someone that's trying to mutate their way into quick Blink. His third next is going down. Kind of interesting to see this map be played in a regular way. We've actually seen some pretty crazy games on this map. This one obviously is going to tighten up a little bit, be a little bit more regular for sure so far. Next impact, combat shield, plus one attack. All of that continues through for the moment. <clears throat> Let's see how Stalkers continue to fight. Stimpact continues to take some damage and some hits. Stalkers do end up blinking away, so... And out of there for the moment. Back up through the middle of the map. What are mines obviously going to be happy? All three of them still around here, so they can just get away. They can maybe come back again a little bit later once more. So again, just going to escape away for now. They're going to get caught by the Phoenix. The Widowmines will burrow. What can they kill? They're going to get shots off. Bang, bang. Stalker, a Phoenix hurting. And the Oracle doesn't actually have the damage to... Um, or the, the energy to revelate initially. There we go. It does kill off the last active Widowmines. So that should be the end of that for the moment at least. But yeah, that wasn't as pretty as it maybe was meant to be. Clem joining up in the center. Plus one attack upgrade is already done. Remember Hero, a back-to-back -back champion of the TLMC. Looking to go for the 3 PT here today, but... Down a game and kind of getting to the point now where I, I kind of start to like Clem's position a lot in this game. Number two, it's starting to look pretty good to him. Ghost Academy is on its way out. So Clem is making his uh, tech ups here as Hero is just playing pure gateway units. Stalker Zealot 
plus the Phoenix, of course, which are not really in super high numbers. Just the one and the Oracle. So what I mean to say is the couple of air units, which is, again, like I say, definitely not going too heavily in any direction just yet. Big load up. Did the Phoenix spot that as Clem just tries to go across the map? Okay, well, Hero's about attacking at the same time. Clem realizes it, so he pulls back to deal with this push of Hero. Clem recognizing that he kind of needs to be here. To just get the full unload going, the natural getting set up. Stalkers and Zelts will already push on forward. Some Zelts and the natural, some Stalkers move up into the main base. We are going to be seeing Clem. Like I said, pulling back to deal with this means he's going to get a lot of the armies. He's losing workers, but killing a lot of the army in the process. This feels, again, pretty good for Clem. There's the recall from Hero. Clem should be able to counterattack from this. I'd expect that counterattack to potentially, like I say, be quite deadly as well. So opportunities are bound for Clem in these next few moments. So it's still moving around in the middle of the map as well. So continue to move those about for now. It's going to be seeing a few of those getting caught though, and that means that Clem is not going to be deal uh, taking any further damage from a counter. And again, he just gets further ahead in army supply. The good news is that Hero's buying himself time, as though the Oracle actually gets in to deal some damage too. Hero is buying himself time by, um, excuse me, sorry. He's buying himself time by, you know, doing these attacks. So Clem does not come across the map, and now Hero can get to Storm. And with Storm, maybe there becomes a chance again. Maybe there becomes something that we kind of like. Maybe there becomes an opportunity that was not really there before. A few ghosts continue in. It's going to be seen the bio still up the right-hand side, and we go. Fighting away, Stalker's getting pushed back around. Actually gonna get one of the high tempo there as we just stim forward with a few units, so that's a nice little grab as well. And it feels like Clem has uh, really got an army supply that's gonna be terrifying. Hero drops one storm, that's his only storm in the game. Clem's being distracted once more, the counter attack of Hero tries to make this game crazy enough to keep it going. The Zelts come back over, they're going to back it up a little bit. It's going to be seeing the Zelts coming back through. Marines, Ghosts, all moving about. A couple of Zealot Wooden Mines going off onto those Zealots. Four SCVs have gone down. The Zealots will get back up to the high ground. Where they're going to meet a little bit of a brick wall. <clears throat> it's really just about if Clem gets across the map, I think this game is going to end. But, uh, again, his opponent is doing a very good job of making sure that Clem does not go across the map. Stalking the Zelda in the natural now Clem is across. He's given up on Karen, apparently, is... He's just going to send it. He says, you know what, Kiro, counterattack. Base trade me if you want to base trade me. So Clem believes he can do well enough here. His uh, production gets jumped on immediately. It's going to be important for Clem to shut down production himself, which he does start to do. Army supply is similar. Hero does have an upgrade advantage, plus two armor over just the 1-1 one, one of Clem. So again, Clem, all of his production going down. Is that going to create issues for him? Bio still moving up. The few SCVs being chased around also. Hero. Love that. Base in the top left. He's going to reach to it as well. Maybe this base trade does go okay for Hero if you can hold that position. Clem has flown a command center or two across the map as well. So we'll probably continue to keep an eye on those as well. So let's try and get the SCVs. Bit more bio still going off. Ghost <clears throat> two still being brought in. Clem's supply is hurting. It's mostly in workers that he's going to be in trouble. How much does that matter? I still kind of like Clem's army a little bit more in a fight, especially if Hero can't warp endure it. Hero's trying to build double robo, and I think that's a sign of what Hero is afraid of: is that his army is maybe not good enough to just fight straight up. Whereas the double robo, if you can get some immortals out, power things up. That could be huge. Clem mining off of Hero's original natural expansion here with two bases in the top left as well, though. And again, you've got to wonder if that is going to create problems here or what is going to come of this. Stalker's actually trying to find this other orbital, just trying to stop Clem from having even more access to mining. And 
He will get it. Orbital goes down. Big deal for Clem. As Hero is now actually about to start warping in units again, guys. He's back up. His supply is looking okay to build. Clem is going to have to go find those bases in the upper left. He needs to do something about them, but there's so much stack defense on them as well. Hero set himself up very well for this base, base trade in comparison to Clem. Making a big difference as an EMP goes down the cannons. The uh, High Templar taking some shots as well. Bio continues to kite back. The Zelt still taking shots. Now we're going to be seeing a couple additional mortals coming through. The barracks all producing. As Bioforce still presses forward for the moment. Storm's all over. And Clem's army's disappearing. Well, Hero, he made it crazy enough. He had a lot of rough times in this game, but he made it crazy enough. He kept it alive to the point where we got Clem to commit to a base trade that Hero was better set up for. And Hero brings it back to 1-1 one and one in this best of five. Okay, guys, <clears throat> sorry for the extended break. Just have to get some sorted out quick. AFK. Hope you're all doing well as we continue the action and continue the games. Bottom right. Tying the series up. Ridiculous comeback. Could have been down to a two very easily right now, but instead it's one and one. Executing their base trade beautifully. Buying all the time in the world that he needed. It's Hero. On the top left of the map, it's Clem. Martinator, thank you, by the way, for this resub. I do have you ready to go on the tree, but I'm just going to have to do it after this game because I forgot before this. Well, I wasn't on camera again before this one, so. I will work you out. I'll get you on the tree. Thank you so much for subscribing and supporting. I appreciate it. <clears throat> I just want to uh, say, guys, as well, just as we're in this, if you're looking for Holiday StarCraft, uh, we will be here tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be here. Not a, a super defined plan, but tomorrow we'll be here with the idea of covering some WTL that we missed, or that I missed at the very least. You guys might have seen it for yourselves uh, on Roddy's stream, for example. Uh, and then on Monday will be the Wardy TV Christmas Day games. In fact, Clem Hero is one of the matches in the Wardy TV Christmas Day games in the quarterfinals. We also have Solo versus Gumiho, Dark versus Showtime, Beyond versus Max Packs. That's a full eight player single elimination tournament happening on Christmas Day. If you want to catch that, it'll be live on the stream, of course. Make sure you follow the channel, see when we're live. If you're looking for Holiday StarCraft, if you can't join us live, the VODs will be available for you all as well. If you'd like to check that out. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for obviously continuing to support all year long, guys, and helping us to keep on making StarCraft happen. We love this game. We want to keep on doing everything we can for it. You guys helped make that a reality, so thank you so very much. <clears throat> Hero is building a one base Twilight Council again. Interested to see what his plan becomes once more here. Obviously, he went for the one base uh, glaives in the uh, previous game, if you remember. In game number one, that did not quite work out. A couple of Hellions coming through, Starport's coming up. Hex is on the way with the Blink and the Warp Gate continuing as well. Love Wardy ruining <laughs> Christmas for all the pro gamers with a tournament. No, it's actually great for the players because it's pre played. The beauty of it all is that it's all pre-recorded. So it's presented as a live tournament. No one's seen the games apart from the players. I've recorded all the games in the last few days. I've been casting them. And it means that you guys get to watch what's essentially the same feel of a live tournament, apart from the fact I don't get distracted by Twitch chat. So it's actually even better than usual. <laughs> um, you get all the feel of a live tournament on Christmas Day. All the players played it previously, so they don't have to be there. So it's uh, it's really the best of both worlds. It's it's pre-prepared StarCraft. There you go. There you go. <coughs> Excuse me. We got a cyclone on the way. A couple of stalkers. Blink coming up as well. A robot facility continues to produce for the moment. Hellion drop here from Clem, gonna try and deal some damage. Stalker's in position, Clem will get one volley off. Will he go for a second? Yes, I'm thinking about when he's gonna lift his Hellions into the medevac. Usually he does that in such a way to try and save them. And he lost pretty much all of them there. They all went down, four probes only. Not exactly what Clem was hoping for on a build that 
is later to the expansion than usual. Obviously, Hero's late to expand too, though, and that helps him. Plus, having Blink at this stage already helps too. The super early Blink, because he won base Twilighted, goes a long way to help out here on Gold Dust. And so Hero deals with that initial push forward, deals with that initial attack. Take a couple of adepts, continue to move through for the moment as well. Let's just continue to get that set up for a couple of moments. And see, we have the Stalker's going to get aggressive. Nelly finding that medivac as well would have been a great little catch. I'm just about able to keep himself alive there at least. Adepts trying to shade up this ramp. Marines in the siege tank will be here. Stalker's still fighting, still trading out. Trying to find, again, everything that we possibly can, just for the moment. Let's do see the... Couple of Adepts trying to shade forward, trying to bring that pressure then. And the uh, Stalker's still here, going to commit the Adepts so that the Stalkers can blink on the tank. We'll only take one volley. Cyclone and Marauder trying to make up for that a little bit, trying to capitalize on the fact that these Stalkers committed in. Will they be able to do enough? One of the Stalkers just went down. We're going to be seeing the Prism still loaded up with a few Stalkers as well, mind you. So that's also going to be a factor for a couple more moments. Oh, this was a little bit of a wild time for sure. I'm just going to see our Stalkers coming over. Cyclone going to take another hit of damage as well. Continue to come around then. Let's just have the Stalkers really bullying Clem. Gold Dust is one of the masks where we've talked about how good it is for Blink all of the time. There's no ramp on the natural. There's loads of space into the main. You can blink very easily from it. It's a very difficult map to defend this blink play on. And every Protoss we've seen on this map has just done exactly that. They've played blink. Because there's no reason not to. It's just so good. You're going to give yourself so many opportunities to deal damage. Obviously, it can still be defended. It can still be held off. But there's almost always going to be chances for you as the Protoss to put yourself in a great place from this. Clem scraping together a defense then as he is not falling down just yet. He refuses to go down easily without a fight. <clears throat> Stalkers continue to trade. Continue to get a few more SCVs. Tank trying to siege up again. If we get rid of the siege tank though, Clem might have issues just having enough units. The Marauder goes down. The real damage dealers are being picked away at. I mean, Hero just needs to take a moment or two. He's going to blink back in the main base. I love the reposition. He's making it so difficult for Clem to be in the right place all the time. Now he gets four more Stalkers warped in freely as well, which is also just fantastic feeling. You see that Starport taking a few more hits. We go back down to the low ground. Now we're going to get some more SCVs. Marines are still coming over. I think this really is just looking so, so good for Hero. I was just going to blink forward once again. Seven SCVs going down. Four Marines. Siege tank on the way up. GG says Clem. Hero breaks him down. Hero takes this to a 2-1 advantage in this best of- Oh, we're behind the schedule. Can we get back to the games instead of talking? Thank you. Sorry, guys. Apologies. Could have just typed to me in-game. Didn't have to ring me up to make a point. Jeez. In the top right-hand side, our right hand player. Repping the Team Liquid banner. It is going to be Clem. I like he had so much momentum in this series. He was on the verge of being 2-0. Now it's 1-2. It's a difficult position to pull yourself back up from through the day. A barracks goes down. We get this set up. Let's see. What exactly will happen over these few moments? We're already a probe over here harassing as Crimson Court this map. That's very narrow until you mine out the minerals. Heroes in the bottom left. He's up 2-1. to one. We'll see how he does over the course of this. Jump on the indie cam because I'm currently trying to tie knots in decoration. So don't mind me. Oh my god, you guys are just going to straight up start a hype train. Okay, I'm trying to cast games. You guys are trying to give hype. Thank you so much. Appreciate Nordere for the four-month resub on the Prime. Thank you very much indeed, as well as Phasor for the uh, 213 for the 18-month resub as well. Starting the hype train even, my goodness. You've got Twitch into scam mode. Beautiful. Lazy Sapien gonna gift five subs as well. Thank you so much. Going out to Sef Sepayu, Tasa D, Pyron SE, Ananda H, and Kenny SP33. Guys, my um, uh, my thing will just be a little bit laggy for a moment while the hype train thing goes off. For some reason, this affects my StarCraft. I do not understand technology, so I have no idea why this happens. 
I just know that here we are, it is happening, as you can probably see for yourself right now. Thank you so much. Oh my god, you guys are just going crazy. Okay, okay. Oh, you, get, you guys are actually breaking the game. <laughs> Hype train, stop, 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 stop. Dude, what happens if I turn it off like this? Okay, I'm just going to close Twitch chat while the hype train thing goes on a little bit, guys, because it's getting a little bit bonkers and it's breaking my uh, StarCraft. That's okay. just want you guys to be able to see the game properly, of course. Thank you so much for all the hype, all the love. I appreciate it. I'll shout everyone out in a little bit as you guys are going actually crazy. <clears throat> Has the hype train calmed down? Yes, we're good for the moment. Okay, you guys are actually going crazy, crazy. I, I see. Cool. I, there's just so many. I'm going to actually have to get my dashboard open. Jesus. What's going on? I just saw, I saw 20 subs from An Anthrax, I believe. Bibby Jom just dropped five as well. I see a Voidray proxy here from Hero who wants to end this series with a one base Stargate all in. Hero is trying to send it. And so we have ourselves <coughs> the Reaper, the Adept, continue to move around. The Adept trying to get in here. The bunker in position. Clem knows what he's playing against. He knows what is happening. He knows what is going on. So that's going to help him out a whole bunch here. For the moment, at least. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you just say just subbing, break his SC2 and then proceed to freaking drop 10 subs, James? For the worst. Voidray comes through. We are going to go for the Cyclone, but the Cyclone goes for the Voidray. The Marines as well. Cyclone dies. Does the Voidray die? No, it's away. It's out of here to the upper right hand corner. It is escaping into the beyond. The Voidray has survived, and that's such a big deal because now we're down a Cyclone, and it's one Voidray you still have to deal with at some stage of this as well, so that's going to be a problem, I'm sure of it. We'll see just how much of one in the next few moments as this Cyclone continues to breeze us on through, continues to get set up. We get all of this underway, Cyclone locking onto the Adept for a few moments as well. Oh, here comes the new Voidray, and the other Voidray comes back! A Voidray Revenge Part 2! Oh, no, oh, oh, this, this, this Voidray is like, wait a second. I thought if I came and attacked a Cyclone, I got to live on low HP. Nope, that was that. that's how it is in the movies, you know? <laughs> this second Voidray saw the movie, figured he was cool. No, this is why you only attempt, you don't attempt these dangerous stunts at home. You leave it to the professionals, such as Voidray number one. As uh, <laughs> we're down a Voidray. I don't really know where we're at in this game. It's been a little bit hectic. I'm seeing my Twitch chat go bonkers. Thank you so much for the generosity, everybody. I appreciate you all. Thank you to uh, everyone for supporting. Apparently, we're about to beat our highest ever hype train on Twitch. That seems wild to me because I, I, I don't think... I didn't see enough subs for that to happen, but I must have missed some. So I'm going to have to go back and uh, catch up on that as Vikings, Marines, and the Cyclone continue to come through as we just have a couple of units sitting on the natural. We do have Clem now defending two bases. is looking a lot more comfortable here. Once we have ourselves the charge on the way, the gateway's on the way. We have ourselves the Voidray coming around as well. A couple Cyclones are setting up. Stalker's going to get pushed back as we do just have Marines coming forwards and looking to try and make a little bit of a difference here. A couple more Stalkers on the way up. We've got ourselves the Marines still building the charge coming through. More Stalkers, more gateways. All of this continue to build at the moment as we have with the charge, especially Hero absolutely going to try and break Clem on a follow-up attack perhaps. It's two bases on two bases now, so we've gone ourselves to a little bit of a different point of this. As we just have, again, extra gates coming through. The units of Clem gathering. I think overall this has just not worked out, right? I think this is starting to look very good for Clem, as though he's got himself a defense, as though he's got himself into the next stage of this game. Looking absolutely incredible. What a game. We're going to have that uh, charge walking by as well. Just going to continue to bring this through. Guys, thank you so much for the subs. I will shout everyone out after the game. Obviously, we're just <laughs> head, you know, we're shoulders deep in this series right now in this game. It's an important one. Clem's fine for his tournament live. Hero's looking to go to the grand finals. The, the freaking chat is just going bonkers. I love you all. Thank you so much. Stim on the way up. Siege tank on the way up. Marine Marauder still coming through. As we keep this on the go, apparently we're about to beat our all-time hype train record. I, I, <laughs> we're about to cross the finish line as Stalkers and Zealots cross the natural line of this base. Can he break through? I honestly don't think so. I think Clem's got a hold. 
And the next hold is going to be even closer to Stim. It is getting better and better and better and better and better here for Clem. This hero, <laughs> the Voidre, the one from the movies, he's shown back up. He's going to try and finish him. I'm not sure if the I'm not sure if the Voidre is going to be able to uh, be the one, man. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do enough here. As you all going to see the Zelts coming through, he's going to go. The Voidre is going to get the Siege Tank on the low ground. Stalkers will have access to the tank on the high ground. Clem will be losing a lot of his defensive units. He's got a high ground bunker. That may have to be a point of defense for Clem here somehow, some way. In the next few moments, we've actually gone to a point where that's going to count. Oh my goodness, we are going to see, well, a few more Zelds warping in. Hero desperate to break. Army supplies 25 to 24. Work counts 34 apiece. It couldn't really be much closer than this right now. As we are going to be seeing the Stalkers and Zelds pushing up this ramp into the main. And we do have the Cyclone going down. The few Marauders and Marines will hold with SCVs in front of them holding the wall. Stopping Hero from getting in. The Widowmine double kill, triple kill on the Zealots. Now the Widowmines might go down, but boy did they do what they needed to. Give Clem a bit more time. He's down six workers, evacuating the natural. Hero will keep up the pressure, continue to warp in, but guess what? Clem has Stim. He's got a bunker. The SCVs try to repair it. It will not happen, however. Zealot Stalker continues to rip through the SCV lines. The damage is being done, and it looks as though Clem is running out of hope, running out of ways to hold, running out of units. He has nothing left but slips and slobs and slabs of a Terran army, a Liberator and a Dream. Make it two Liberators and a Dream. Unfortunately, Liberators, I don't think they're going to save you once a few more Stalkers come to play. Maybe the Zealot shouldn't run through the choke point. Clem will use any possible advantage to try and defend, but it will not happen. It will not be enough. That, my friends, is GG. And that is Hero to the Grand Finals here to take on Bjorn in the Wardy TV Team Liquid Map Contest Tournament number 11. Hero 3-1 over Clem. Shout out to Clem because...